all new Dr. Phil. Get out of my room. She's afraid of her teen daughter. According to your mother, you threatened to slit people's throats. But is it mom? I'm a big pushover. I do all these threats and I never follow through. So you're the problem then. You created a monster? I have never wanted you out of my life. I got you on tape saying it. If family was gone, it would be a lot better. Why are you up here now telling me you didn't say it? Let's do it. Show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Do it, Dr. Phil. How you doing? Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, important work today. If you're a member of a family, and we all are, I want you to listen to this emotional recording from Valerie, a mother who says she is desperate for help for her out-of-control teenage daughter. Get out of my face. I do not want to deal with you anymore today. Hi, Bailey. Get out of here. You're in a that was the mother that you were hearing telling her daughter you are insane Valerie says things are so bad that when her daughter Bailey was only 12 years old she attacked her and left her battered bloodied and covered with bruises I'm afraid of my daughter Bailey get out of my room I feel like Bailey is possessed just rages out of control and she can't quit very violent something takes over Bailey and you don't even know who she is anymore Sack of she hits herself she'll punch herself scratch herself she will throw things hit things slams doors she will just start freaking out in the car, say she's going to jump out. She's busted out a car front windshield, totally shattered. I can't believe what my daughter can do when she's in a rage. She's 15 and a half, and it's getting worse. As she's gotten older, her behavior is more violent. My daughter, Bailey, got mad at my son, shoved him so hard into the wall that she's busted this. She's beat me up before. Oh, my God! do anything to control her she's like a crazed animal the strength that she has it's like she's wild we had to call the police quite a few times because it's gotten so out of control 911 my sister do you think she has a knife she said i'm gonna get a knife and i'm gonna slit your throat this is one of the knives that bailey has pulled out before and threatened us with i've locked myself in my bedroom in my bathroom anywhere i can get to get away from her Bailey has scared me more since she beat me up. One time I thought she was going to beat me with a towel bar that she yanked off the bathroom, but the cops got there in time and they had to pull her off of me. I had bruising and scratch marks on my chest, on my arms, on my stomach. I was bleeding. Bailey was taken to a juvenile detention center for attacking my mom. The police have been called on Bailey at least seven or eight times this year. I feel like there's something really wrong with my daughter. Bailey is tearing our family apart. I have no control over her. I'm afraid that Bailey will either kill herself, kill me, or kill us all. Okay, you are not describing a peaceful home. You're not describing a happy child. So what's going on here in your opinion? Why is this happening? She's just not happy anymore. She's very hateful and very controlling, very violent. And you are at a point where you're afraid for your safety and your life. I am, and my and, son's. And there's a little brother here, mm -hmm. and you're afraid that she could actually hurt him or kill him. Yes. And uh, you say your daughter, quote, turns into an animal. Yes, yeah, she just And goes she ballistic. becomes possessed. She turns demonic. Mm hmm Yes, she and does. And just has superhuman strength. Yes. Uncontrollable, uses weapons, tears the house up, attacks you. But additionally, she attacks herself. Yes. Yes, she does. She's hit herself in the face. She scratched and clawed 
herself as well. Have you seen that behavior as well? Yeah. Uh, what do you make of that? I don't know who she is. When she acts like that, I ask her, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to yourself? You say you think she does all this for attention. Sometimes I do, but when she gets really bad, where she's like <clears throat> punching her thighs and digging her nails into her skin and just sitting there and she'll grab whatever's next to her and scream into it really loud, I don't even think she realizes she's doing it. So you think she gets to the point of blackout anger? Yeah. Okay, and she's threatened to kill herself, threatened to jump out of a moving car. Mm -hmm. Yes. Before. And now, let's start with one premise that I want you guys to entertain while we're thinking through this, is behaviors often start for one reason, but continue for another. Sometimes this acting out behavior can start, as you say, for attention at one point, but then it takes on a life of its own. All of a sudden, it becomes where it controls you and you lose yourself in it, right? And you're saying that that's what's happened here. This has gotten to the point that even she can't control it. She doesn't turn this on and off. It just happens. You describe it as demonic. Yes. I don't know how anybody could hate their mother or hate their brother and say they want to slit their throats. Hope I go to work and get in a car accident and die. Hope my son goes to school and somebody hits him with a car. She wants to get kids at school to gang up on him and beat him up. Well, from threatening to kill classmates to violent girl fights, leaving her expelled from school, ba Bailey says everyone is and well should be afraid of her. Take a look. Your rules are f***ing retarded. I hate authority. Absolutely hate being told no. That is a sack of f I am narcissistic, and if I don't get my way, I flip out. When I get really pissed off, I'll go into block outrages to where I don't really know what I'm saying or doing. Why are we fighting? Because your rules are stupid. My mom definitely knows how to set me off. She went to go slap my face, and so I punched her. She would say, you don't know how bad I would love to beat the living pulp out of you. And I was like, just do it then. I know that she doesn't have enough to actually hit me. I know she's afraid of me. I don't mean to laugh, but I think it's dumb that she's scared of me. When I get into my rages, I'm just like, God, I just wish I could kill you. People are afraid of me at school. This girl had made my cousin cry. I confronted her about it and just uppercutted her straight to her face. You don't take anything from anybody. Somebody tries to punch you, you punch them back. I haven't done anything this weekend. I've sat here and done the stupid that you wanted me to do. She's not going to be able to change who I am. I say what I want, and if somebody doesn't agree with it, that's their problem, not mine. Get out of my room. Okay. Um, I'm glad you're here. What do we do here? What do you, what do you think this is about? Um, getting a better relationship, trying to work out, you know, what goes on at home. Are you out of control? At some points, I do lose my temper, and it gets pretty bad. You said, and I quote, I think it's funny mom's scared of me. I just, I don't think I'm a scary person. That's why I find it, like, funny that, like, she's scared of me. Like, I just don't find myself, like, a scary person. According to your mother and, and your sister, when you get upset, you become oftentimes violent. You, like tear the house apart, you've ripped towel bars off the wall, you've picked up knives and threatened to slit people's throat, you've said I will kill you. Um, I have lost my temper and I have like thrown things before like, um, it's kind of scary to like see, you know, a 15 year old girl going and like being able to pick up a king size mattress with somebody on it. Did you attack her when you were 12? Yes. Here's what she said. Don't tell me it's true. At 12 years old, she said you physically attacked her. She locked herself in the bedroom, in the bathroom, and you beat down the door. You threw the vanity on the ground. You ripped the towel bar off the wall. You beat her, scratched her, and threatened to kill her. True um, or false? Part of that's true, but part of it's false. She said 911 was called, and the cops had to pull you off of her when they got there. In like my fit of rage, I hit the towel, the towel bar, and it ripped off the wall. Yeah. 
She says you've left bruises all over her body. You've beaten down the bathroom door. The door frame is loose. It's been pounded on so much. You threatened to kill her with a knife. You've called her an <laughs> bitch. You've told her to shut the <laughs> up. Hope you die in a car accident, you <laughs> stupid, <laughs> retarded, fat bitch. I get like that, like when she says things to me. Like when she calls me names, she gets, you, she, you, don't even shake your head. I am going to say something. Okay. Because you say things to mom, even when she doesn't come at you. You're lying. No, okay. If mom tells you no, she doesn't have to say anything else. And you instantly. Nasty names. No, I'm just trying to find out where the bottom is. She said that you, you get in her face sometimes and say, punch me. I dare you punch me. You held a fist to my face and I patted my face and I said, do it. Whatever. Because I know that she's not going to do it. You said she doesn't have the enough to hit me. Right. I don't right. want to hit you, Bailey. Nobody should hit somebody else. Right. Bailey says her mom loves playing the hopeless victim. But the truth is, she says, her mother is far from innocent. She says her mother has called her names just like I just read off that she calls her and told her things no child should ever hear, much less from their own mother. We're going to find out the flip side of this when we come back. I hate being around my mom because when I look at her, it honestly just pisses me off. Get out of my room! This is the respect I get. You're bitching at me! I'm not bitching at you, I'm- Yes, you are! Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Families in crisis after a brutal attack. My mom never came to see me in the hospital. She stabbed in the heart by her family. She says it killed her that you wouldn't take off work. You, I don't see how I hurt you. Mom, look at those pictures! Plus, he's 24, lives at home, and mom drives him everywhere. You're going to do this till he's 40, and then he's the creepy guy living in his mother's basement? That's tomorrow. I hate being around my mom because when I look at her, it honestly just pisses me off. Hearing my mom's voice pisses me off a lot, especially if she's bitching at me. Get out of my room! This is the respect I get. You're bitching at me! I'm not bitching at you, I'm Yes, trying. you are! I have told my mom that I want to hurt her like she's hurt me. I call my mom fat a lot because I know it hurts her. You know how bad it hurts me when you call me what you call me? Uh, that you're fat and lazy? Yeah. I have told my mom she is stupid and her opinions are retarded. My mom says things to come at me and hurt me. My mom has told me I'm a slut and piece of What did you call me? I don't remember. You called me a slut. That's no, I me. did not. You did too. My mom has told me that she never wants to see me again and that I'm not her kid. My mom does call me a little bitch all the time. You call me a bitch all the time! No, I don't. Yes, Bailey. you do! You know I don't. That is a sack of You know that. I will be like, and you wonder where I get it from. I feel like she doesn't understand me at all. Okay, now that's disturbing. And Chelsea, you're going to have to kind of weigh in here because you're there some of this time. But Bailey says that you have said to her, you are not my child. I wish I could get rid of you. You're pathetic. I want you out of my life. I never want to see you again, you little piece of bitch. Bailey, I have and never slept. said that Excuse to me. you. Left that out. I have never wanted you out of my life. Yes, you have. Well, wait just a minute. We have a little piece of tape where you actually talk about this. And I, I want to be sure that I'm getting the truth from everybody here or we're done. Look at this. If Bailey and I are in the same room together, I can feel the anger and the hate. I'm really worn out. I'm really stressed out. Sometimes I think that I don't want to be your mom anymore because I have no control over her and I just want to give up. I feel like if Bailey was gone, it would be a lot better. <laughs> Who says that 
to or about their child, and then you sit here and, and tell me you didn't say that? No, it's... You, you look at her and say you didn't say it? I got you on tape saying well, it. No, it was, it's not like that. I feel like I am so drained and so tired, and it's getting worse and worse, and I can't handle it anymore. Then tell me the truth. Don't sit here and call her a liar when she says you don't say those things to her. You don't say you wish you weren't her mother. You don't say you wish she would go away. Hell, I've got you on tape saying it. Why are you up here now I, I telling me you didn't say it? It's just, I don't know how to explain it. I... There's times she's gotten better. She has. They used to be at each, like constant in each other's face, screaming, yelling so loud. I would be driving and I would scream because I wanted them to stop. They would both say nasty things to each other. You would do it too, Mom. You can't lie about no. it. She has said nasty things to her, but it goes both ways. Yeah, I understand it goes both ways. We have an adult and a child. I get that. And both she behaving said like to children. Her that I would never That's say to my okay. kids. That's not okay. I get that. I get that they both say it. It's not okay what you say. It's not okay that. what you do. That is unacceptable. It is outrageous. It has to stop. We'll get to that. What the hell are you thinking? I get to the point where she says stuff to me and calls me stuff, and I can't take it anymore, and it just makes me go crazy. So this isn't just a Bailey problem. No. I, this is a family problem. Exactly. But she's 15, and she thinks she's 25. She thinks she can come and go as she pleases, have boys in her room, sneak them in, sneak kids in her room. Excuse me. Drinking. Just, uh, I want to be sure I don't. You. I just want to be sure I don't lose my place here. Who raised her? Pretty much me. Okay, and, just my, and my mom. J just checking. So, all of these outrageous behaviors are, are happening on your watch. Yes, pretty much. They're gotcha. things that you let happen over and over and over. And I assume when these things happen, you consequate them. No. There are consequences. I try to have consequences for it, but it never works out. Empty threats is what it is. Yes, so it is. So it would be a no? Do you catch her, like, smoking or drinking or stealing your car or what happened not when going she stole to school your car? or whatever? What do you do? What, 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 what is the consequence? I try to um, tell her that she's grounded or her biggest thing is taking away her cell phone. And then I don't ever follow through with it because it, she doesn't care anyway. It's like she's going to do what she's going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. she, she stole your car. So what'd she do? Nothing. Nothing. And then like three days later, they went shopping and she got expensive new coats. Oh, she did do something. Didn't she ask for the spare keys back? Oh, yeah, she did. She asked for the keys back and she got the keys back. And that was pretty much it. So basically her punishment was having to give the keys back. So she couldn't do it again. I, I don't get your thinking here. I don't. Let's take a break. Valerie says there is one person Bailey hates more than even her. She's even told her mom she's going to slit his throat with a knife. Going to find out who that is and why Bailey says she hopes she never sees him again after the break. <laughs> My brother pisses me off and I hate him. She told my son that she hopes that he will get run over by a car and die. I'm afraid that Bailey could kill my son. I feel like Bailey doesn't have any fear of the consequences when she does stuff. She got expelled from school for getting in the fight at the football game. She has had so many truancies this year that she is one truancy away from being court ordered to go to school. I know she has been smoking marijuana and drinking. It's just getting out of control and I cannot do anything anymore. Well, Valerie says there is nothing anyone can do to stop her 15-year-old daughter Bailey's destructive and violent behavior. She says things are so bad that she and her son have resorted to locking themselves in their room, fearing for their lives. But is Bailey really a threat to her family members? 
If you ask Bailey, there's only one person who should be afraid of her. She admits that even she worries that one day she could snap and seriously injure him. Take a look. My brother pisses me off and I hate him. Bailey thinks that I love my son so much more than her and that I babied him. My 11-year-old brother still sleeps with my mom and I think that is absolutely outrageous and pathetic. She says she wishes he was never born. She told my son that she hopes that he will get run over by a car and die. My brother tries to get me in trouble with my mom with absolutely everything. When my brother called the cops on me, I was pissed. I wanted to punch him in the face. He needs to mind his own business. I do not care if I see my brother again. I'm afraid that Bailey could hurt or kill my son. She's threatened so many times to do awful things to him. Every day when I come home, I'm scared to walk in to see what might be going on. Well, you said, and I quote, I wrote it down, I have so much hatred for him, I'm glad he's afraid of me. He should be. That means he just won't mess with me. Like, by that, like, I just, you know, it is sad that my brother's scared of me, that my mom's scared of me. You said I could snap and hurt him seriously. I could. Like. Well, Bailey's little brother says his sister's horrible treatment of him leaves him feeling so sad that he is depressed. Take a look. My sister Bailey is so mean. I'm scared of my sister Bailey. When she gets mad, she'll just punch me. I don't know how she gets angry so fast. When she calls me names like fatty and I don't like it. it hurts my insides. Bailey makes me sad and depressed. I don't like being home when my sister Bailey's here. My sister Bailey wanted to go on a car trip that cost a thousand dollars. My mom said no. She got really angry. My mom told me to go and hide. I went down to the basement bathroom, called the cops. 911. My sister, you think she has a knife? Okay, are you safe right now? No. I want you to get yourself safe, okay? When I got there, I felt relieved. I was scared that my sister was going to hurt my mom. What's your reaction to that? Knowing that it makes him depressed, like, I didn't know that it hurt him that bad. But, like, he's called me names before, and, like, I don't know, like, I act like it doesn't hurt, but it, like, when I'm by myself and I think about that kind of stuff, it does hurt. Why do you hate your brother? I don't know. Like, it just bugs me that he's so babied. Like, I never got the treatment that he did. Like, he's, my mom has spent more time with him than she does with me. Like, I, my only childhood memories are with my grandma. I have no childhood memories with my mom or my dad. I have childhood memories.
memories with my sister, but I don't have any memories with- We do so much, Bailey. You're I'm talking about childhood memories, like when I was younger. And like, I have a really good memory, but I don't remember you, having you either of my parents. Brother. I did. It just bugs me because he's 11 years old and still sleeps with my mom. When there's an extra bed that he could sleep in, and he still sleeps with my mom. Like, I think that's pathetic. Like, my mom is not going to be there for him when, you know, some kids come up to him and start saying stuff to him and start bullying him. You're not going to be there when that happens. And he needs to know that. Bailey, your brother is a nice kid. I don't think anybody would bull bully him. People already do bully him. Mom, people already do. No matter what kind of person he is, he's always going to be... Did you somebody's just say he's a nice kid so no one will bully him? Well, I just... That makes it worse. I don't know. I mean... I mean He gets along with people really well. You used to get along with people. No, he really doesn't. Well. He, you see him coming home from, from friend's house or school, and he'll be crying because kids bully him, and you know that. I, I want to take a break, and um, I, I'm going to ask you to excuse us for a few minutes because I need to talk to your mother, just adult to adult. Um, <clears throat> And then I want to talk to you without them, okay? Because okay? this situation is not okay. We'll be right back. I try to be a good parent. Don't know what parent is then. I'm so scared of her. I'm scared of her. I don't think my mom is a good parent. There is no discipline. My mom's way of dealing with things is to just give Bailey whatever she wants because then she doesn't have to deal with the aftermath of telling her no. Shut up. My mom buys things for Bailey. We got her a couple North Face coats and I think my total was over $300. And I said, Mom, really? She just stole your car to go to a party. I don't get it. I blame my mom for a lot of Bailey's problems. She's never taken charge. My mom drops Bailey off at boys' houses without even checking to see if their parents are home. When Bailey rages, my mom calls me for advice. I'm 28, I have three little kids. I'm supposed to be calling her for advice, not her calling me for advice. She's checked out on her responsibilities as being a parent. I feel like she has decided she doesn't want to do it anymore. It makes me mad because she's a big part of the problem. It's not me saying it, it's your other daughter saying it. It's what, nothing what, I haven't already told you. What's your response to all that? She, it makes me times. feel bad that she thinks that I'm not a good parent. I try to be a good parent. You don't know what parent is then. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You've got a daughter so frustrated she's clawing at herself. Is she cutting? I I was told like she's told. You don't some, know? I I guess I don't know. I, when we were talking to you in the pre-interview, we asked you, has she seen anyone and been diagnosed? And you said, Well, yeah, kind of like maybe ODD and maybe bipolar-ish, I'm not sure. Then when we talked to you again later, you said she's never been diagnosed with anything. I had a doctor tell me that she was definitely that ODD, and they told me that she's just to the point where she could be. Like there's, a, it, I thought it was a D word that they called it, that they thought she wasn't look, quite there look, yet. Look, or. Do you understand how outrageous it is that you are unclear about this, that you don't know if your daughter has an illness? <laughs> so, oh, no. Seems like there was a D word in there. Was it delinquent, remember. drunk, defiant, depressed? I mean, no, let's go through some, the alphabet. It was some medical I mean, term. Come on, buy a vowel. Do something. Tell me something here that you know about your daughter. I can't remember what the medical <clears throat> term was for it. Okay, that should scare you. That as the supervising parent, 
you don't know if your daughter has an illness. That speaks volumes. She's been given medication for her anger. Yes. And you say, I, she is still full. I just don't see that she takes it. I was trying to monitor it when it first started, and she didn't want me to monitor it. So it was in my bathroom. So when I came home one day, she had taken it. And she said she was taking it every day. And I would ask her. How did it work said, when she was on it? She didn't she take didn't it. Take it. I, 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 it was a 90-day supply, and I don't even think there was a week. And, and what was it? Um, Sir, Sertaline or... You don't know. S-E-R-T. I don't know how to pronounce the word. It could words, be one of those. could be serotonin, -E Seroquel. It could be... S -E -R -T -A -L -E. It's an S. Okay, so we got a D and an S. We're trying to solve a puzzle here. Do, do you realize how outrageous that is? And you agree that you don't have any consequences when she does something wrong? I don't because I know they don't work anyway because I'm a big pushover. I do all these threats and I never follow through okay, with them. Okay, so you're the problem then. I am because I am afraid of her. So you say I'm a big pushover. I don't stick with, with what I'm doing. Because I, I have to tell you, I think that what you're doing is ab absolute negligence. And I think it's negligence that rises to the level of abuse. I, I think you're I would never your abuse my daughter, though. You are abusing your daughter, in my opinion. How? By being negligent as a parent. How am I being negligent, though? How are you being negligent? Were you not here for the last five minutes as we went through this? You don't know what her diagnoses are. You don't consequate any of her behavior. You don't stick to anything you say. You don't supervise her medications. You don't know what they are. You don't know what they do. You, you don't know whether she's taking them or not. Get them away from her. So you just basically say, okay, I've got a daughter here that says that she'll kill me or herself, so I let her walk around with a 90-pill prescription of something that's supposed to calm her? She wouldn't give it back to me. <laughs> Hmm. I'm so scared of her. I'm scared of her. Look at how you let her dress today. I Beth. can't control it. Yes, you can. You don't want to. You buy her the clothes she wears. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. After she was attacked, her family never came to the hospital. She says it killed her that you wouldn't take off work. I don't see how. Look at those pictures! That's tomorrow. I, I, I do think you are unplugged here. I, you're in over your head, right? I am. Um, and, now know, we my, have... and now my son has seen this go on for so long that he's starting to, no, no. And I know, it's sad. It's yeah, really sad. But not a surprise. You know, I have an advisory board here at the Dr. Phil Show that's really made up of the top minds in psychology, psychiatry, medicine, sociology, from all over the place. One of the members of that board is here. It's Dr. Charles Sophie. He is the medical director for the County of Los Angeles Department of Child and Family Services, which is the largest of its kind in the entire country. And he was one of the folks that I asked to vet this story uh, and he's here today. Everybody, please welcome Dr. Charles Sophie right here. Uh, doctor, you have spent days uh, unraveling this Rubik's Cube of dysfunction. Um, as a psychiatrist, as the medical director of the largest child and family service division uh, in the entire country, what are you seeing here? Well, I mean, the bottom line is you are abusing your child because it's neglect. It's emotional and it's intellectual neglect. Yeah, you feed her, you bathe her, but the bottom line is you're not a parent. I mean, look at how you let her dress today. Why is she dressed like I that? I can't control it. Yes, you can. You don't want to. You it's a choice. <laughs> you, you buy her the clothes that she wears. Do you not, Mom? You buy her the clothes she wears. I We've her. talked about this for years. I know, I buy her the clothes that she wears, but how she wears is not how I but bought you, them. Mom. You want no responsibility. I understand she's a tough kid, but you're, you, you've given up. You're her sister. You're not her parent. 
You compete with her. You're the same emotional age. <laughs> What are you hearing Dr. Sophie say? That I'm a bad parent. I guess no. I shouldn't no, be a parent no. anymore. No, he's saying you're not a parent. He said you have become a sibling. You have become someone that engages her on her level. Y'all tried therapy, but I'm told you didn't take it seriously. I didn't take it seriously? She was the one that didn't take it seriously. Neither one of you did. Why do you say your mother didn't take it seriously? We had to do it at my house because it was when Bailey was living with me. And I felt like I was the, it was like here, I'm the only one who's being real. I feel like you and Bailey both told her what she wanted to hear so that you didn't have to do it anymore. You guys always complained about having to do it. Is that true? I don't feel like it was with me. I know that right shaking, after Is this we, one of these things that you're going to deny and then admit because you are, let's just fast forward to the admission. I don't No, I'm not going to admit that I but was. But you didn't even, but here's an example. When you knew Bailey was manipulating her and telling her what she wanted to hear, you didn't even tell her. The very same day that was your last session, 10 minutes after her last session, my sister went right back to screaming and yelling and doing everything. She called me. I said, call her. Tell her you need more sessions. She didn't call her. That was it. True. Yes, it's true. Why? Because I knew it. I'm sorry. I knew it was a waste of time because she, it's like here. She thinks, <clears throat> Bailey thinks this is a joke and it's funny. She thinks she's on vacation. Yeah, you know, we've had a lot of conversations with her. And uh, she has been very forthcoming, very transparent, and uh, told us a lot of things that are unbecoming to her. She has taken very seriously this process and prepared for it, perhaps the best of the three. Now, does she also look forward to coming to L.A.? Uh, probably. Uh, I hope there's a silver lining here. Look, I'm going to take a break. Is this just simple teenage rebellion or is it a reaction to something else? Uh, with her mother's permission, I want to speak with Bailey alone and ask her about a tweet she posted that really caught my attention. It, is it all right with you if I go speak to her alone, sure. privately? Yes. We'll do that right after the break. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or call 323-461-7445. Bailey describes herself as a normal teenager who is just going through a rebellious stage. Her mother Valerie and older sister Chelsea disagree and say her behavior is in fact destructive and dangerous. I'm going to go in and talk to her now alone. All right, leaving them out there so we can just talk here for a minute. So what are you so angry about? Getting told no and like not being able to do what I want all the time. Look, like you're that. smart enough to know that you don't go through life getting, getting to do everything you want to do. Right. You're, you're, you're smarter than that. So why are you behaving this way? Because I want my way and I want my mom to understand that I'm not going to change for her. She's not going to tell me who I'm going to be. You say you don't want her telling you who you are. You have threatened to slit their throats with a butcher knife. That's when, like, I've gotten to my point where I'm just but really that's pissed not, off. But that's not normal. I'm irritated that you're trying to define me. Why are you going there? I don't know, because, like, when I get in my fits of rage, I just say things. Like, I don't, I wouldn't actually slit somebody's throat. Like, I... You have blackout anger, so you don't know what you would do and what you wouldn't. You can't say that. You can't say I would. You said, my old brother's afraid of me, and he should be. You're right. Because you say, I get so angry, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like what I'm saying and what I'm doing, yeah. Like You posted a tweet up that said, if I survive, I'll see you tomorrow. I think I'll slit my wrist again, and I'm gone, gone. 
those are lyrics from a band that I listen to. Uh, and but, like, but you chose those lyrics instead of "It's a Beautiful Day" lyrics. You you chose that. Why? I don't know because I feel like I'm just a waste of time for everybody. Like, why would anybody waste their time on me? You know, sometimes I do wish that I wasn't here. I just feel like if I wasn't here, they wouldn't have issues. They wouldn't have problems. So you're a burden. Pretty much. I'm just a waste of their time. Would you like to know what I think? Yes. I, I don't think you're a burden. You can be a pain in the ass. Yeah. But I don't think you're a burden. I think you're a blessing. And I think that to whom much is given, much is expected. And so let's look at what you've been given. You're young. You're healthy. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. You're energetic. You're vibrant. You... you, you you have all of these things. You don't have the right to waste that. And if your mother has been less than perfect, and she has, she doesn't know how to do some of the things she needs to do, but she loves you very much. And you have to decide that you are lovable. You have to decide that you are acceptable. And then you have to hold yourself to a standard that is befitting of everything that you've been blessed to have. I want to give you a break from your mother. There's a place out here called Center for Discovery, and I am going to make an offer to you and your family for you to go there for a while, be away from your mother, and let me do some things with your mother while you're gone. Let's go back out and talk a little bit, okay? Fair enough? All right, when we come back, I'm going to talk about where this family goes from here. I'm going to bring Bailey back out. We're going to all sit down together because this is a situation that can change in a way you will not believe and in a reasonably short period of time. We'll be right back. Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. I'm back uh, with Bailey. We've been backstage talking in, in the green room. You, you listened to our conversation. Yes. What did you take away from that conversation? It may, makes me feel bad that she thinks that I don't love her. And it makes me feel bad that she feels like she's nothing, that she feels like she's worthless. Look, you're in break here. And you need a break for a couple of reasons. For her to learn some new coping skills with this blackout anger she's having. Uh -huh. And for us to have an opportunity to spend some serious time with you to come up with a plan here for this family, to come up with some parenting. Uh, this is Dr. Matt Polachek right here, Matthew Polachek. Um, <laughs> he's the program director for the Center for Discovery. Th this is a place that I have tremendous confidence in. Polachek? This is a perfect fit, is it not? Yeah, I agree. I mean, just to separate the family, and I see the same thing you do, a smart, wonderful young woman that I think she'll blossom at Center for Discovery. And, you know, what we can do is get a full evaluation and work on her self-esteem and coping skills like you had mentioned, and then we can slowly integrate the family back together, and uh, I just think it's a great fit. And I think not only does she need it, I think that she really deserves it. And you've got to work at least as hard as she does while she's gone, right? Yeah. Thank you for writing this letter. This is a gift to your family to get all of this started, and I'm, I'm glad that you did that. I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Matthew Polachek and Center for Discovery for helping Bailey and her family. A special thanks to West Shield, the experts in transporting, so that's so great for them to help out. And, of course, as always, a special thanks to uh, Dr. Charles Sophie, member of our advisory board, uh, for being here. Dr. Sophie, thanks for weighing in on this. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Right, we'll talk to you soon.
Thank you so much. All right, guys, thanks so much.